Today's Bible study will be coming from Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9, and it reads as follows. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father and mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Amen? Now, as we go to the breakdown of this, when we look at verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 1, it says, Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked. First thing we should remember is that in verse 1 it states, it says, Teachers of the law and the Pharisees. But be ever present of who they were speaking with, because they did not believe Jesus was who he was. They were on their high horse and their mighty thoughts and their ways of how things had been done. But they didn't know that they were speaking to the high and mighty. Also, the word tells us of who gives true instruction, and it wasn't them. If you look at Matthew 23.10, it says, nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. So, in short, how does a student instruct the true teacher? They were already in the mindset that they were they had more wisdom than Jesus, but if they really would have known who he was and feared him with reverence, they would have gotten instructions and wisdom from him. Whereas they were more adversarial than they should have been to the Creator. Verse 2 says, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Um, the funny thing here is that they ask a question about man's traditions, the elders. And the first that was their first mistake. If you look at Mark 7, 8, You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. In short, you don't follow God's command. And this can also be a statement response for verse 3. If you look at verse 3, Second mistake is the man is that man is at man's wisdom slash philosophy. And any time he is at that, it is a failure. If you look at Colossians 2.8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. In short, man is relying on man instead of relying on God. And he's following his ways and he's not following God's ways. So you so-called intelligent men of the law are not understanding of who gave you the law, nor of the ways of the prophets who wrote about the one that is to come. And right now at that time, he's in front of them. Third mistake, which was more lack of knowledge, is if you look at Mark 7, 18 through 20, are you so dull, he asks, don't you see that nothing that enters a person from outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared, all foods clean. So it's not what goes into you, it's what comes out of you. And that, that speaks to, you can see the bad in this world, you can see the hypocrites and all this stuff. And that may go into you, but it's not what should come out of you. You should still have God in you, and you should be able to see those things, and they don't bother you. That is where your strength comes from. That's where your faith comes from, because this world is going to put bad things in front of you. And these Pharisees and these holders of the law were bad people trying to find a way to, I guess, trip up Jesus, with, but it wasn't going to mistake, or going to happen, I'm sorry. And the fourth mistake in John 2, 6, it says, 
Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Do you notice in this verse that it speaks to man's ceremony? That's just food for thought. We, we seem to follow man's ceremony, and that's not what this is about. When we do man's traditions, we usually don't do the Lord's traditions. Uh, you can look at all the holidays that you see in the Bible, and you won't find any. You can look at the way we do things now. You won't find them in the Bible. We don't follow the Lord's ways on a lot of things, and man makes up his own ways. Jesus replied, and why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradi tradition? Jesus replies with a rhetorical question, and also one that pushed the true responsibility back in their face. Jesus does it with a teaching manner, but lets them know that, hey, you break the command of God, and what is higher, man or God? We all know it's God. It was never man. Their tradition was getting around the law of God. They were doing things for convenience and for their purpose, instead of for God's purpose and being obedient. If you look at Mark 7, 8 again, and we just said this could answer verse 3, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. There are no human traditions to hold on to. There are only God's ways, period. Verse 4, for God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. First, remember that this is the fifth commandment, and we will address this. But here are some things to think about. This is how the law worked. It condemned. It was not faith and mercy. I know that we only think of the commandments, but there were 613 laws. 248 were positive, and 365 were negative. So these traditions that they were trying to hold were huge, and they were using them to fit their needs. If we go to Galatians 4.21, Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? In order to be under the law, you got to know what it says. And they were getting ready to be out of the law. But they wanted to put everybody else under the law. The real problem is they weren't doing it with their heart. They were doing things with their mouth. And that was not working out. If you look to Galatians 3, 10 and 14, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, as it is written. Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Not law. Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the Set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. So Jesus came to redeem us from the law. Verse 5 says, But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mothers is devoted to God, then the sixth day are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. If you even take a quick glance at just the Ten Commandments, you shall see that on the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other God before me. That's, that's a God thing. You shall make no idols. That's a God thing. And we were doing both of these things wrong. We were being disobedient. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Well, we were doing that thing. Three, and that's to God. Three things wrong. And keep the Sabbath day holy. That's also something that we were doing wrong. To God, and this is to remember always. That's to God. 
Now, here are the things the man that we seem to find so somewhat great to do. And we didn't do them, excuse me, fully correctly all the time. Honor your father and your mother. That's a man thing. From person to person. Honor. We don't do that either. You shall not murder. Once again, this is a man thing. Man to man. We don't do that. You should not commit adultery. You you see what I'm saying? Man to man. You should not steal. Man to man. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. Man to man. You should not covet. Man to man. The things that were honors to God, we didn't do right at all. And then even man to man, which the Lord commanded us to do. And I'm just looking at the Ten Commandments. I didn't even go through all 613. We still couldn't do those right. So we had great lip service, but our heart was never into it. So they were only looking at the commandments that benefited man and going around the ones for God. I don't know how you get to go around the ones that, <laughs> the ones that go to God and put man's in front of them. I would have God's in front of those men all day, every day. Don't make Jesus correct you because he will put you put it in your face. But he loves you when he corrects you if you want to be corrected properly. Verse 7 says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. He calls them exactly what they were because they were doing what pleased and benefited them and not following even the law correctly. They were not protecting the law. But they were protecting their traditions, as we even do to this day. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus is speaking to them from Isaiah, which is someone they knew or read from. Jesus has a way of putting things to us so that we can understand them. And this prophet has spoken about the people saying one thing, and doing another and their worship is not worthy for the Lord to even look upon because they're teaching man's rules that I created and not God's rule I think of a verse I think the verse should have read worship the Creator and not to create it or you could say who do you pray to yourself or God because man can't answer prayers man was trying to be what man was not and man was not God. We did. We were making traditions to fit our needs, and we don't get to do that. We were trying. We're trying to be with the Lord, and if we want to be with the Lord, we got to do things the way that Christ would do them. These people were doing what we do in modern times. We say that we are a Christian as a noun, but the Christian that is a verb, we don't act like. In short, we talk the talk, but we definitely don't walk the walk. If you look at 1 Samuel 16, 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So know that if you open your mouth up and confess all this stuff to people, and it's just lip service, and then your heart is black and hard and it's not trying to do the true work of God, man may not know that, but the Lord knows that. And it will come to light sooner or later. So don't give the Lord lip service. Don't follow man's traditions. Give the Lord your heart and start following his ways. If you follow the Lord's way, you will please the Father. And he will add to you. And it doesn't have to be wealth or material. Just a simple fact the knowledge knowledge about who he is and what he has for you and what you can do for him because we are servants we should be doing for the Lord yes he rewards us I know that happens but our first thought should be what can we do today to be more like the Son amen amen